Hey, what's up? It's Marquetta Breslin. And listen, over the past 18 years that we've been in business, I have had the opportunity to train some really amazing people from all over the world at my hands-on live events. And with that, training these people in the art of ventilating and making wigs, I have seen some of the same mistakes made by different people from all over the world. So tonight, I want to share with you three of the key things. These are the most common things that people experience that you want to avoid when you're starting to ventilate. All right. But before I get into that, I want you to make sure to say hello in the comments because I'm about to go over to the comments and say hello to a couple people over there. But I also want to make sure I mention this before I move into training. There is only, well, almost less than one day left to enroll in Lacewig University. Um, after, after that, it's going to be gone, and I, I really don't know when I'm bringing it back. Uh, my schedule is filling up like crazy, and I don't know when I'm going to be able to bring it back because of the amount of time that I'm spending with the students. So there's already... Um, we're already rocking and rolling, so you still have time to get in. You just go to lacewiguniversity.com to enroll. All right. So let me just go over here to the comments and say hello to a couple people and make sure you um, share and like this video. All right. Share it with anybody who you know is struggling with ventilating. Listen, I know, I get it. People hit me up all the time. They're either watching my videos on YouTube or they are uh, inside the Lace Week training system. And they're like, look, Mark, I'm just having this one issue. Can you please help me? And nine times out of 10 is one of the three things that I'm going to be sharing tonight. Okay. So let me head over to the comments and say hello to a couple of people. Sandra Brooks, you are not playing. You were here right on time. Thank you so much. Great content. Thank you very much. Rhonda, Rhonda, how are you? Good evening, Miss Marquetta. Good evening, family. I am in need of this lesson tonight. I can't get past the single knot. You currently are having trouble getting past the single knot, but hopefully after tonight, you'll be all good. Kina Mercer, how are you? Indira, Indira Brown. Hello, blessed people. Amber Graham. Hello, Nancy. How you doing, Nancy? Paige Ryan. Hola. Hey, Paige. C. Thomas, how are you? Rhonda, I said, what's up just a few minutes ago? Frida, how are you? Sharon Johnson, how are you? Zan, how are you doing? Stephanie Dixon, Dashiell Ward, Marnie, Monica Dennis, Ivy, Anetta, Ariel, Simply November, Naisha, Sherry Anderson. Man, hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? It's so nice to be before. Hey, Carmelisha. So Carmelisha is an amazing instructor inside Lacewood University. Her course releases when the bonus is released. And I flew her in from my hometown. Well, from my home state, North Carolina, to teach all about wig repairs. And she does an amazing job. And what a lot of people don't know is that Carmelisha was one of the ventilators that I flew in to help get the Lace Week, tra the Lace Week training system, to get Lace Week University, uh, the filming portion. So when we were making all the wigs and stuff, she came in to help us ventilate and speed up that whole process. So shout out to Carmelisha. Make sure you go and follow her. Uh, C. Hart, hello, hello, Ananya Pierre, Ayana Pierre, Sierra Scott, Jazzy, Tamika, uh, Shorty, Shouty Knox. I got to make sure I say that right. <laughs> Stephanie, Monica Dennis, Lena Landon. Hello, everyone. It is amazing. Hi, Deidre. How are you? It's amazing to see you all on here. Listen. Last night, I recorded a video that I haven't even gotten a chance to edit yet and send out, I was going to send it to my text community last night. Uh, Ricky and I went out to dinner 
and we both came to the conclusion that we are exhausted and we need a break. <laughs> and so um, tomorrow, um, after we go live tomorrow, that will be the last live that we do until the first week in December. We're gonna take next week off. Listen, this has been a crazy, crazy year for us. It started off with a bang. We had so many things planned that we were gonna do this year. And then like many of you know, uh, all four of us got hit with COVID. That was crazy. We were out for about a month, a month and a half. Um, and then we came back and we filmed um, Lace Week University in the middle of living partially between California and Las Vegas. And once we turned on the cameras, we haven't stopped. We've been going straight for almost four, five, six months with no days off. All right. And it's all for you. I wanted to make sure that I delivered the best training, the best lace wig university that I had in me. And so I gave it every, we gave it everything we had. Once those cameras turned on, uh, we did not turn the cameras off like until we were completely done. And then I went right into editing. Um, and then after that, we went right into launch mode and making sure that all the videos got uploaded and all of that stuff. And listen, we need a break. So <laughs> after tomorrow's live, that will be the last live until December, but all of the lives for December will be scheduled except for the prayer calls. I will not stop doing those. Those are still going to happen every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right. So I'm very, very, very excited for what's to come. Um, I am currently working on finalizing some things for a potential hands-on event next year. So we'll see about that. Um, I will be sure to, the first people to know about that are going to be people who are in the text community. They will get first dibs because it's most likely going to be uh, limited to the number of attendees. So just make sure you're in the text community so you don't miss out on that. And don't forget, you can enroll in Lacewig University at lacewiguniversity.com. There's almost less than 24 hours left and then it's gone. And I don't know when I'm bringing it back. Okay, now let's get into, let me take a sip of my tea. Mm. So this tea, tea tastes different when it's in a mason jar. Let me tell you about this tea real quick because you just have to know about this tea. So when we used to live in Charleston, there was um, a restaurant and inside of a hotel in downtown Charleston at the Charleston place. And they used to serve this peach tea and it was so good. And they would put like a slice of peach in it and then like a little lemon wedge on the side. Best tea I've ever had in my life. So we were so interested in this tea while we were living here. We were like, you remember that tea from Charleston? So we called the hotel and uh, called the restaurant we used to frequent. And they told us where we could buy the tea. So we bought a case of it. And yeah, it's so good. Anyway, I don't even know why I told y'all that. But let's get into the three biggest things that you want to avoid when ventilating. All right. So when it comes to ventilating, you have to understand that something like ventilating is foreign, right? It's not something that um, a lot of people do. So it's not something that is a common thing like braiding hair or uh, cornrowing hair or something like that. You see that all the time. So you can kind of have an idea in your mind of how it's done. And then when you try it, it kind of makes more sense. And then you can arrange your hands in such a way that you actually make a braid if you sit there and try long enough, right? So with ventilating, it's a little bit different because it's not something that we see done a whole lot. Now, when ventilating is some things that we have to remember. Number one, I'm actually going to mention to you more than three things that you want to avoid, but I'm also going to mention three, some, a lot of things that you want to make sure you're doing as well. All right. So inside Lacewood University, the lesson that I teach on ventilating, I think is over an hour long or close to, it's either close to an hour or over an hour long. All right. So it's a lot to be taught when it comes to ventilating. And obviously I don't have time to 
do all of that here. So I'm going to give you some key pointers. Number one, you need to make sure that you are sitting with good posture. All right. It's because a lot of times when it comes to ventilating, you can make the mistake of um, not sitting in a chair where you have good posture or not using a good enough wig cradle or wig stand and it messes up your posture. And so you end up slouching. And when you slouch, everything is loose and you're not, you don't have proper tension. So when you ventilate, it's not coming out right. And you're dropping knots and you're dropping um, hair because your body posture isn't right. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have proper posture and that you're sitting up straight. That's why I really love that um, tripod from Atelier Bossy because of the feet at the bottom. It allows you to prop your feet on the legs so that it takes the pressure off of your lower back and you can have better posture. Okay. That's number one. Okay. The next thing you want to make sure or the first thing you want to avoid is holding too much hair in your hands. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen people at my events hold huge chunks. I had some hair down here. Hold, hold huge chunks of hair in their hand and try to ventilate it. All right. If you... <laughs> The biggest, the, the easiest way to minimize this is by taking a pinch, just a tiny pinch of hair off of the bundle that you're using, and then you prep it and fold it in your hand and twist it and do everything you're going to do with it there. If you hold too much hair in your hand, when you get ready to make the knot, some of the hair from that big bunch that you're holding is going to pull out. And then that's what also makes knots messy. All right. You ever see the difference between a, a, a very messy knot and a clean knot? Sometimes the difference when that happens is the amount of hair the individual is holding in their hands. And so when they go to make the knot, they're not only pulling the hair from what they have, like they're not even, they're not only pulling the one to two strands that they're trying to pull, but they're also pulling additional strands that may not necessarily make it into the beginning of the knot, but somehow they get tangled up in there and then the whole thing begins to look messy. So you have to be very, very mindful of how much hair you're holding in your hands because if you're holding too much hair in your hands when you're trying to ventilate, it's going to be a hot mess. All right. So you want to make sure that you're holding a very minimal amount of hair in your hands. And then from there, once you get comfortable with ventilating, then you can adjust the amount of hair that you're holding in your hands. OK, you may say this is not enough. I can add a little bit more. Or you may say this is still too much. Let me reduce it just a little bit more. All right. So that's the first thing. All right. So before I go into the next thing, I see a bunch of people just joined in. And if you're just tuning in, you're watching Marquetta Breslin live. And tonight I'm sharing with you three things you want to avoid when ventilating. All right. I see a comment right here that says, how do we enroll in the text community? OK, there is a number that's scrolling on the bottom of your screen. You just simply text that number and you'll be added into the text community. All right. So be sure to text that number that's scrolling on the screen. Now, for the most part, like tonight or this evening, I went through and I answered most, I think, 99 percent of the message. I think there was like one or two that I didn't get a chance to answer. Um, but I answered most of them personally. I'm going to tell you now, if you send a customer service type of text, it's going to be, I don't answer the customer service text. It'll be somebody from my team that I'll either refer you to or have them reach out to you because I, I just don't do that. Um, but most of the time it's me answering. Sometimes if things get a little busy in there, my team will jump in and help me out. All right. What do we have next? <laughs> Hey, how are you? Um, yep, that's it. Does anybody have any? You know what? Yes, Courtney, you are right. It is so much easier. Um, when you hold a little bit of hair in your hand versus holding too much hair in your hands, it makes a world of difference. 
sometimes also what makes a big difference is sometimes that hair is so dry that when you pull it out, a whole bunch of hair comes because it's just so dry, depending on the texture and the type of hair and your environment. If you're in a dry environment, moist environment, all of that plays a factor into the hair that you're using. So sometimes you may want to have a um, tiny container of water next to you and you can just kind of dip the hair in the water just a little bit to get it wet so that you have more control. All right. So you just want to be mindful of that uh, when you're ventilating. Now I see, I saw another comment. Oh, here we go. I looked up the stand from Bossy and my pockets. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you though, let me say this. It is one of the best investments you'll ever make even if you don't just make wigs, even if you style you style wigs for clients or something like that, best investment you'll ever make, you'll never buy another um, uh, tripod unless you buy another one of his because it just, it just lasts for so long. Um, are you talking about human hair or I'm guessing you mean synthetic hair? I'm specifically referring to human hair. 99.99999% of the wigs that I make are with human hair. I, I rarely ever do anything with synthetic hair. However, I do have a student that focuses on just making synthetic wigs. But what I'm referring to is specifically human hair. All right. Mm, I see another question right here. I'm having issues with cross knotting. At least I think I am. The placement is what I think I'm not doing correctly. I wish I had my whiteboard right here and I would draw it on the whiteboard for you because cross knotting seems confusing, but it's not. It's super duper easy. Tiffany, I think you're enrolled in Lacewood University. Go back to the ventilating lesson and sit it on cross knotting and make sure you watch the look at the diagram that I bring up because it shows the directions on each bar, right? It's so simple and so easy. And a lot of times what trips people up with cross knotting is how you have the lace laid. So it depends on whether or not the holes are vertical and horizontal. It might take a minute for you to like look at it and figure it out. And then you can assess and say, okay, this is how I'm gonna cross knot, all right? It's easier, in my opinion, to cross knot when the holes are laid horizontal, going across like this. All right, when they're vertical, it's a little bit harder. Of course, you can do it, but it's just a little bit harder to map out how you're going to do it, okay? All right, I'm going back. Up, oh, I see another one right here. Rhonda says, yes, it tangles, but I thought I took away, took enough away and good, thank you for the water because I didn't know we could use it. Yes, absolutely. There are, um, I mean, there are even some people who chew, I know it sounds disgusting a little bit, but there are some people who chew the hair because the enzymes in our saliva breaks it down and makes it um, softer and easier to ventilate. But yes, what I said that to say that moisture and water helps significantly when controlling the hair. All right, so let's get into number two. Okay. The second thing, which probably should have been the first thing, but these are in no particular order, is lighting. All right. Lighting will change your life when it comes to ventilating. People don't really understand the importance of good lighting. All right. There are a bunch of different lights that you can use. Um, the lights that I have in my studio. So a lot of times when I'm, I'm ventilating, I'm sitting somewhere in the studio because we have lights in here and we use um, lighting from a company called Draycast, D-R-A-C-A-S-T. All right. The reason why I really like these lights is because they mimic daylight. They don't get hot and you can adjust the setting. Okay. I think I'm about to pull up a screenshot here in just a second. Um, but I'm going to keep talking until it comes up. All right. So what about magnifiers? Okay. I'll get to that in just a second. 
So with Draycast, the reason why, again, I like those lights is because they have, they mimic daylights, they're LED lights, they're not hot, and you can adjust up or down the setting. Now, let me tell you, I used to use these lights called Lowell Total, Total Lights. They used to, we used to have those in our studio and that's how we would light the studio. The problem with that is that those lights are extremely hot and they're yellow. I was commissioned to make a wig for a film years ago. Um, I was commissioned to make a wig for a film years ago and it was a very short turnaround for this particular wig. It was, that was the last wig that I made for television and film too. They have, it, that's a whole nother live. Anyway, so I'm working on this piece and I'm having to pull an all nighter, like literally an all nighter. So I had the total light. It was beside me, but, and it was pointing down to, it was pointing down to the wig block. And I didn't think anything of it because I didn't, it didn't feel hot or anything like that. And I was just going in, I'm ventilating, I'm ventilating and getting my work done. And I finished and I went to lay down. And when I closed my eyes to lay down, I saw nothing but light on this side of my face. And I went to feel my face and it was hot, hot. All right. So that's when I knew I had to switch over to LED. You do not want to use fluorescent lights. You want to use LED lights. Now you can also find a great LED lights on Amazon. And they're inexpensive. Just be sure that whatever you use, there it is right there. Just be sure that um, that is the Draco. I said Dracast. That is the Draco broadcast website right there. Um, the particular ones that we use in studio, I don't even remember what we pay for them, but they do have them in different price points. Okay. Uh, we have the LED 2000s. They are normally $2,000 per light. You can get them for a thousand. I don't think anybody watching needs that unless you're doing a lot of filming and stuff like that. We use them for our studio. They do have different lights that are way cheaper, right? That um, you can just get, I think they already come with the tripod too. And you just set them up and you can just focus it right there where you need to focus it at. All right. There is um, also on Amazon, as I stated earlier, you can get those little portable ba battery operated lights on there as well. Um, and those will work really, really well. The reason why I know lighting plays such a major factor is because when I teach and do my one day events, I have to bring in my own lights to the hotel because a lot of times in these hotels, especially here in Vegas, for some reason, the lighting is very, very dim and you can't see. And you should see the, the aha moments that people have when I flip those lights on because they, it makes such a big difference. You have to be able to see because the holes in the lace are so small. Now, um, yeah, I'll just leave it there. The holes in the lace are small. You need to be able to see. So with lighting, all right, that's one thing you want to avoid is bad lighting. But also with lighting, sometimes you may find that you can see better with a magnifier. Magnifying glasses, the little thing that comes up that you flip down, um, that's also an option for some people. One of the things that I do um, at my hands-on events is I have a table in the back of different glasses that I have collected from different stores. When I go in, I just buy them, like a lot of them at a time. And I let people uh, take the glasses with them home because sometimes with reading glasses with readers, it just magnifies things so much better so that you can see. All right. So that goes with lighting. Uh, Jeremisha says for my studio, I just use ring lights and they're great. Boom. There you have it. A ring light is going to give you that same LED effect. It's going to give you the same lighting and you can use that as well. You do not have to use a fancy expensive light. You just need great lighting, but I always suggest LED lights, not fluorescent lights. All right. Um, my daughter uses ring lights to film her, uh, makeup videos. So yes, yes, yes. Okay. Stephanie Thompson says, I just snagged a double ring light, two rings at one stand Boom! <laughs> on Amazon. It's a game changer. See? Yes. Lighting is so important. All right. 
And I'll even have students sometimes uh, when I have those live events that ask me, hey, can I just move my setup closer to the light? Because it makes that big of a difference. And I always have students hovered around a light so that they can see. But always remember, when you can actually see what you're doing, then you can see what you're doing. All right. So that is a huge, huge thing that you want to avoid. If you live in an area with low lighting, you want to make sure, or if you're set up where your wig stuff is, you want to make sure that you have proper lighting, because if not, you're not going to be able to see what you're doing. You're going to be putting um, two holes together. You're going to, it's, it's a lot that you'll be doing that you can avoid if you could just see. All right. Uh, Anita says, I need new glasses. I wear bifocals, but I still cannot see. I did buy my magnifying glasses and a ring light. They help a bit. You may find, though, that even with uh, the magnifying glasses that you need a stronger version. I only say that because this last time, I think it was two times ago, when I went to uh, my optometrist, I told him, I had to show him, I said, sir, Dr. Beckwith, this is what I do. I need you to see what I do so you can understand why it is important for me to see. I'm wearing bifocals right now, but they're specific. My prescription is specific for wig making. So I don't have to, I used to have to switch my glasses out and put on a different reader just to be able to see when I'm ventilating. But now um, my bifocals are uh, formulated specifically for what I do for ventilating. All right. So that may be an option for some of you who already wear bifocals. All right. So listen, before we move on, I saw some more people just hopped on. You are tuned into Marquetta Breslin Live. And tonight I am sharing with you some things to avoid. It's supposed to be three things to avoid when ventilating, but I've already shared more than those three things. And I'm also giving you tips when it comes to ventilating. But listen, you see that big old yellow thing at the bottom that says enroll at lacewiguniversity.com. There's almost less than 24 hours left to enroll before it is gone. Here it is right here. This is everything you get when you enroll in Lacewig University. I'm so incredibly excited. It is broken up into four different phases. And you see all of those phases on the screen right now before you. Phase number one is the Lacewig training system. Uh, you get instant access into Lacewig training system as soon as you enroll. And then on December 11th, that is when the mentorship program unlocks. And the mentorship program is broken up into three separate modules. Module one is all about making your first piece. Uh, and you have 30 days to get that done. Module two is all about marketing. That is a missing piece of the puzzle for so many people. People make beautiful wigs or do amazing hair or can be the best personal trainer or massage therapist. But if you don't know how to market your services, none of it matters. All right. Marketing is key. So in part uh, module two, I teach you all about marketing. We spend 30 days doing that. And then we wrap up with focusing on your mindset, because if you're not you don't have the proper mindset, you may as well not even try to do this because there's going to be too much head trash that you're dealing with. And you can't focus on building your business. OK. And then last uh, next, not last but not least, next, the next thing that's going to release are your bonuses. There's nine different bonus courses, including uh, two new courses, one from Rob Fuchs called Wig Styling and Maintenance. Wigs, wigs. Rob is one of the most talented hairstylists I know. He is amazing at what he does. And he comes he came in to teach you all about wig styling and maintenance. And then I have a brand new course that I'm teaching called Sewing Machine Wigs Made Easy, where I teach you how to make a wig on three different machines, all right? Three different types of traditional machines and as well as the industrial machines. So that's four machines total. And then um, in between, I forgot to mention, in between your mentorship program, there is going to be a live, a private live meeting with just the students where you get to ask your questions. 
All right. And just today, you may already see this. If you're already enrolled and you look inside your live stream details, I'm doing a, well, it's not a surprise anymore, <laughs> but I'm doing a surprise live virtual event on December 11th. All right. So I'm adding things in there that, uh, that are unannounced already. All right. Throughout the course, you'll have a private page to ask questions um, for our four months together. After the bonuses unlock, uh, the next thing that unlocks is your certificate. So you'll have to take a test and pass the test to get your certificate and you get a seal to put on your website to show that you are a Lace Wig University graduate. All right, there's the link right there. Enroll at lacewiguniversity.com right there. It's going to be amazing. Almost less than 24 hours to enroll. All right. So, oh, I did. So I extended it a week. Tomorrow's the last day. So last week after the Wigathon, if you were on the Wigathon, man, let me know what your favorite part was in the comments. Because I had so much fun. I'm still thinking about uh, how much fun the Wigathon was. We had such a great time. But last week, um, after the Wigathon and during the Wigathon, I was watching and reading some of the comments. And I decided, because a lot of people were DMing and emailing us as well, saying they needed more time. So I decided to extend it a week to give people time to enroll because the last time I did anything remotely close to lace week training at this level was about 18 months ago. And I didn't want to, anybody to have to wait that long. All right. Since I don't have a, a date of when I'm going to open up enrollment again. Okay. So there's less than almost less than 24 hours left to enroll in lace week university. Do not miss this. Okay. All right. Um, Going back to, oh, let me look at some of these comments. Welcome, Broccoli, N-O-B, Casserole. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Hey, hey, Kathy. How are you? I <laughs> uh, hope all is well with everyone. Everybody's so nice. He is amazing. I found him on page. Yes, yes. His, that's what I always say. His work is so polished. He is amazing. All right, Nina says, for the first time in three years, mm, I got a strain in my neck while ventilating. I sat for too long while ventilating. Truly have to block my work time so it doesn't happen again. Yes, that's very important. Uh, health while you're ventilating is very important. My, I have an active release um, chiropractor that I go to. Active release is a technique that he uses. He uses many techniques like cupping and stuff like that. And he used to always say, Marquetta, when you get ready to like, you got to stretch, you have to stretch or because your body could be like this for a long time. That's why another reason why I invested in a good tripod, because I can adjust that tripod to wherever and however I'm sitting. And if I'm in a setting like this, like I'm about to probably tomorrow start working on a brand new wig that I with hair that I've been sitting on for like three years that I haven't even touched yet. I'm going to do most of the work here because it's good posture for me right now. This is a great chair. I'm just going to use my wig cradle and build it here. And then I'll probably switch over and use the uh, tripod some too. All right. So posture is, is very, very, very important. We have to maintain the health of our bodies so we can keep making these beautiful wigs. Okay. Um, Oh, my favorite question. Mimi Williams says, how long does ventilating and closure of frontal take? I always say that this is my favorite question because it is the most common question. And the answer to that question is it has so many different factors because it depends on the size. It depends on the density. It depends on the type of lace. All right. So and it depends on the hair as well. Size, density, type of lace and hair. The reason why I say that is because Think about my hair, all right? You guys, I don't know if you can tell this on camera, but I have very coily and kinky hair. It doesn't take a lot of my texture of hair to create bulk. So it wouldn't take me that long to ventilate a kinky textured closure because I don't need a lot of hair, all right? 
if it were a fine curly hair, it may take, it just all depends. All right. So you got to think about the size. You have to think about the density and you have to think about the texture of hair. So there's no real way for me to say it should take you four hours because it may take you eight hours, depending on all of those things. All right. Okay. Uh, moving right along. Let me get to the next, um, point, which is actually the third one, but I'm going to give some more. Um, the next thing that you want to avoid when ventilating is you want to avoid not having enough tension. Okay. Tension. I always say this in my hands-on classes, tension equals control. All right. The more tension you have, the more control you have. However, if your tension is too tight, especially if you're using synthetic hair, you're going to snap the hair. But if your tension is too loose, it's going to come off of the barb and you're not going to be able to make a knot. So that's why I use, and you may, listen, you may hear somebody else say, I don't use my middle finger for tension or I do it this way, I do it that way. Fine, that's wonderful, right? Everybody does, not everybody ventilates the same way. My daughter is my assistant at the live events. She teaches a different way of ventilating than I do, but our end result is exactly the same. You have, if you've been on my Instagram, you've seen some of her work. She was another ventilator that helped ventilate the uh, closure, the frontal and the wig for Lace Wig University. And she, her work is phenomenal, but she doesn't ventilate like I do. All right, so I like to use my middle finger to help me with the tension. That way I have control over what the hair is doing. My daughter doesn't do that. She just holds the hair tight enough that she doesn't have to worry about using that middle finger for tension. The other thing that you want to avoid is working too far away from the wig block. So if your wig block is here, you don't wanna work way up here First of all, if you're working way up here, that means your turnover is way too long. Because if your turnover, which is where you fold the hair over, is two inches or less, then you only have two inches to work from the block, all right? You don't want to work further out than that. You want to stay very close to the wig block without going too, too close where you're snagging the lace, okay? I got a couple more pointers. Let me go over to the comments and see what's going on. Oh. <laughs> Lena said, listen, I need a cradle. It's been so hard to find. When can I buy your cradle? All right, look, we are so very close to launching. All right, listen, I always show, it seems like the, 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 the Ezra cradle video is like so common here. So for those of you who don't know what she's talking about, I'm going to play a video here in just a second. That's going to show you the Ezra wig cradle. Let me just remove uh, some of these things off of the screen. Um, and I'm going to run the video so that you can see what she's talking about. Let's do it.
I saw y'all in the comments. I promise. I didn't, I'm not teasing you guys. I promise. That's for the people who did not know what you guys were talking about. Okay. So that wig cradle that you saw is a wig cradle that I designed. And um, I will tell you, it is made with, well, you saw it, very high end material, um, even down to, to the black, the black walnut wood, how everything is made. You saw the craftsmanship. It's very beautiful. It's very nice. And it is right here. I didn't even know that I had it with me right now. Oh, this is what it looks like. I love this thing. I'm telling you, I have, I have needles in here. That's what you can hear. Let me just take them out. This is it. Vicky German actually won one of these during the Wigathon. So I'm really excited. I will say this, the availability of the wig cradle is extremely limited because of how, like, because of how they're made. It is, when I say extremely limited, it's extremely limited. And I will tell you, they are not cheap. All right. So I'll just say it like that because of the, the, the amount of, um, because of the quality of materials and how long it takes to make just one, the, the quantity is super duper limited and they are not cheap. It's more like a collector's item um, at that price and everything is handmade. We make them in small batches to make sure that we don't sacrifice on the quality. All right, I'm all about quality. Even down to like the beveled edges. Some edges you'll see, like you, I don't know if you could tell in the video, but as I was designing this, this edge right here that's smooth, I needed it to be sharper on the inside so that I had some stability. All right, so even down to that, all right, it's just the small details that I wanted to make sure to pay attention to. And even down to the weight, the weight mattered, like everything mattered in this whole process. And I was very meticulous with the end, how I wanted the end result to look. Okay. So I'm not teasing you guys. I promise I'm not teasing, but <laughs> as I said, we have had a crazy, crazy year and the plan, I'll just share this tea with y'all. The plan was to launch Ezra way earlier this year. Ezra was going to be launched before Lace Wig University, but it just never, it did not work out that way because with COVID um, and how we all got sick and then in the middle of everything, there was a period in this year where we got presented, our, we got presented with an opportunity to set up a satellite location in California for our business. And that was literally a decision that was made in 24 to 48 hours. And so with that decision being made, we had to pick up half of <laughs> half of everything and move to California in the middle of everything after having dealt with everything we dealt with, with COVID. And it was just crazy. So we had to adjust. We had to adjust some things and I was really adamant about making sure that we filmed Lacewood University because the amount of emails and phone calls we were getting asking when we were going to open enrollment again, it was overwhelming in a good way. So that's when I said we came back together, we had a meeting and we had to rearrange how we did things. So I promise you, we are working very diligently after we take our break next week. We're working diligently to get Ezra launched. All right. So thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate you so much. I really, really do. All right. Listen, the whole team is on it and we're going to get it done. All right. You Well, text community will be the first to know and then I'll tell y'all. I'll tell you ASAP. Okay. All right. So let me go see what, what are y'all talking about in these comments? I'm kind of nervous to see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, here we go. Ah, I like this question. How does one use a wig cradle? 
So a wick cradle is used sometimes in the place of a um, tripod. You know when people say, I'm going off topic for a moment. You ever hear when people talk about um, after they had COVID, then they have this brain fog thing, and that that's that's really real. COVID brain fog is a real thing. All right, it's something that I have been noticing that I'm not claiming, but that I noticed that sometimes it takes me a minute like to catch up. <laughs> so I'm praying for myself right now, Lord, please restore. <laughs> or make my brain function even better than it was before. Okay, so the way this is used is you place your wig block inside the cradle and you position it in such a way that it allows you to uh, ventilate and to position your wig block in such a way that um, you can still ventilate without having to slouch or do this. You see here, this table is right here. This is a tall table, if I stand up, the table, because I'm short, it comes to probably to about maybe right here, but I'm sitting in a tall chair and the table hits right above, probably like an inch or two above my hip bone. So it's a good distance from the table to me and my arms and my, my head and stuff. So if I position my wig block right here, then I can ventilate without having to manipulate my body and go all like this. So sometimes people use their wig cradles to build wigs on, or they can use a tripod. I use both depending on where I'm at and what I'm doing. All right. Yes. So last year, I think it was last year. It might've been earlier this year. Um, we had to create a wait list because what, once people saw the wig cradle, they were like, I want it and I want it now. So we ended up creating a wait list, which, um, if everybody on the wait list makes a, buys the, uh, wig cradle will sell out the, like it'll sell out probably within the first five to 10 minutes. Okay. So I promise you, I promise when they sell out, another order will be made, but they will be made in small batches. So just be mindful of that. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes, Hannah. COVID brain fog is real. Hannah, I saw a question from you earlier. Where is it? It was a good question too. Here it is. What length of hair would you recommend practicing with? That's a really, really, really good question. So I would avoid in the beginning using hair that is too short. I have some hair. I think I use it in uh, Lacewood University. That is eight inches. It might, no, 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 no. It's not even eight. It's four inches. It's four inch hair. It's about this long right here. And I usually use it around the hairline area. Um, I would not suggest starting with that. I would suggest starting with longer hair, something around uh, 14, 16, 18 and up. Not too long, though, because you don't want to be pulling all day long. So stay between the 14 and 18 inch range, because I wouldn't even say 14. I'm going to say 16 to 20 inches. Because you have to remember, you got to fold that hair over for two inches, all right? So that's your turnover is two inches. You do not want to go longer than two inches on your turnover for um, uh, cuticle hair, Remy hair, all right? Uh, listen, if you want to be put on the wait list for the cradle, send an email to support at Ezra hairandwig.com to be put on the wait list and put wig cradle in the subject line. Okay. All right. Uh, wait list. Where was I? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, definitely worth the wait. <laughs> yeah. So Jazzy, be sure to send that email to support at EzraHairWig.com in the subject, just put wait list and we will add you add you to the wait list. How much are your shirts? I don't have any, um, you know what? Somebody, oh, you're talking about these shirts. See, I thought you meant Lace Week University shirts. You're talking about these shirts. These shirts aren't available yet. They will be available when Ezra launches. 
Um, when I tell y'all the level of detail that you're going to see when you order merch or order products, it's, un, it's unmatched. I mean, we've spent over a year and put a lot of time and money and energy and effort into this brand. It's been two years that we've actually been working on it the, with the photo shoots and flying people out and uh, designers and all kinds of things, even down to the t-shirts. I was sharing on the uh, Wigathon that I probably tried on. I feel like I tried on 150 t-shirts just to get the right one. And not even just that, like even down to the tags that we have on the merch, it's excellence. My husband is adamant about operating in excellence. He has, he stays behind the scenes a lot, but we come together and we make an amazing team. So when you see it, Ezra is built with love, right? It's built with love, it's built with excellence, and we spare no expense in making sure that when we built this company, it was the best, the best in everything. We wanted to, we wanted to put our everything into this company and we did. All right. Yes, Tisha. Tisha was gifted one. Yes. Tisha said, hey, Ricky, I will be sure to tell him you said hello. All right. Uh, let's see. I saw another question in here about ventilating, but I may have missed it. Okay. <laughs> I need Ezra hair to go with my t-shirt. <laughs> yes, you did win the t-shirt. Yes. I'm curious about Ezra hair. I really want to see it and try it. So tonight after I get all this live, my daughter is bringing me out of retirement for doing sew-ins and I'm going to sew her weave in with Ezra hair. So my only, my only requirement for her when I do that is that she, she puts makeup on so that I can post the picture so you can see it. All right. For those of you who want to see more about Ezra, I'm going to tease you again. All right, so <laughs> I'm about to play um, this video from all of the shoots and stuff that we've done. Um, so you can see kind of some behind the scenes and some of the models and you can see the hair. So here we go. What up, Breslin, and I'm the founder of Ezra. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2006 and she lost all of her hair as a result of the chemotherapy. And after making her her first lace wig, I saw how it totally changed her perception. I just want women to feel confident and to be able to pick up a wig and put it on and instantly look and feel better is amazing. See, I hadn't even released that video before. I usually play a different one on here. So I'm just so excited. I can't wait for us to release. And finally, I'm going to be releasing my wig line. And it's just going to be, it's going to be really, really awesome. Um, I got last year, I think it was last year, when my husband and I were on live, we got these boxes in. And these are the, the Ezra boxes. Um, that we worked so hard on. I was so giddy with excitement when we got these boxes in. I was so excited. I'm still excited for these. Even down to the wig boxes. Even down to the stuff. See, some of y'all haven't seen this, any of this yet, but even down to the boxes that the merch and the product is shipped in, which is not these. These are not what it gets shipped in. This is just what it's packaged in. These are the um, wig boxes. They look like a hat box. I mean, this was done in excellence and in love, even down to the tissue paper. I'm telling y'all, everything, all right? So I'm super excited about Ezra. Okay, you have to do your, <laughs> yes, yes, Nina. You have to do your due diligence with the t-shirts because quality is so important. I love a shirt that feels great on the skin and is good quality. All right. Okay. Let's see. Jason, how are you, Jason? I love that box. You do love a good box, don't you? You are so uh, um, artistic, Jason. So artistic. Um, 
uh, where is it? I just, it just moved. Beautiful. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Uh huh. Excellence. I've been following you since your CD videos. <laughs> wow. That's a long time. That's a very long time. Thank you so, so much. You are so incredibly amazing. Um, always perfectly lit, good production. Hold on. Let me say, let me say a minute. Let me say a thing about that. Shout out to my husband for that because I can sometimes just want to cut down the tree before I sharpen the ax. But my husband has always for the past going on 19 years said, Nope, we got to go sharpen the ax first, meaning we got to do the research and make sure that we have the right lighting, the right cameras, the right uh, backdrop, the right chair for you, the right everything. So this what you see is a product of having an amazing business partner and husband um, and him always operating in excellence. And then our video guys. Um, our editors for some of the some of the uh, the videos that you see, like the one that just played, it's a it's a team effort. But we really have amazing people that we work with, and even outside of the the people that we work with, we just so happen to work really really well together, which is I hear a miracle to work with <laughs> the husband and wife to work together. All right, so uh, shout out to my amazing husband for being who he is. All right. Um, I see some more comments. Give me one second. Somebody asked me about uh, something about the, hold on. Let me just see if I can find that comment. Uh, I don't see it anymore. All right. So while I'm looking for this comment, let me um, go be sure to, all right. I see what I'm looking for right here. Okay. Well, it just disappeared. If any of you use StreamYard, you can relate. This goes so quickly. <laughs> Elstina said, stop it, stop it. <laughs> I have some Ezra hair. Ah, but Miss B, I've been harassing you about the cradle. I hope I'm on the list. <laughs> Y'all are so awesome. Um, where is that comment? For... <laughs> okay, I saw a comment somewhere. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. What was the scripture tied to Ezra? So the scripture tied to Ezra is Hebrews 13 and 16. And I'm going to read it verbatim. It's on the bottom of the shirt. I was trying to open it, but I don't want to open the shirt because it's prepackaged. Um, here, I'll open the shirt. How about that? So I can show you, y'all know I am very unapologetic about my faith. Uh, Romans 1 16, for I am unashamed of the gospel is one of my favorite scriptures. So y'all see, I'm being super careful to open this so that I can put it back in the packaging. So here it is right here. All right. On the bottom of the shirt just so we can be reminded is this little tag right here that says Hebrews 13 and 16, which reads, and do not forget to do good and share with others for such sacrifices. God is pleased. That is how we've always built our business. That is what we stand on. Um, doing good to other people, sharing what, what we do, sharing what, what we love and sharing the gospel, all right? Uh, that's very, very, very important to us. I, you will always hear me say uh, that you'll never hear me speak negatively about other businesses and other people. Number one, I think it's tacky, it's disrespectful, um, and I just don't roll like that. We don't roll like that. And in 16 years, 16, going on 19 years of being in business, I have never done anything like that. And no matter what other people do, I will never do that because that's putting my mouth on one of God's children, whether or not uh, they act like one or not. All right. So that's just how we roll. And the Lord is a, 
listen, if you own the very first Lace Week training system that was in the box, inside those modules were scriptures. Inside the pages of those modules, we had printed modules. There were there were two modules, a module one and module two that we had printed. Um, there were two modules that I wrote to go along with the system. Inside those modules, all the way back in 2009, six, nine, something like that, there were scriptures in there. So I've always loved the Lord. All right. And I just, that's just how we roll. It's very important to me that um, I continue to stand on the word of God and love on people, no matter how I am treated. I always, I always have to say this and remind myself of this. I don't even know why I'm going here right now, but sometimes people can be people and you feel like um, people are treating you a certain type of way. But at the end of the day, we don't know what people are going through in a particular moment of their lives. And I'm going to share this story with y'all and then I'm going to sign off. I don't know who this is for tonight, but I got to go where I'm led. So one day, um, this was years ago, <clears throat> I was in Walmart and I'm standing in line in Walmart and there's a young girl at the cashier thing and she has a nasty attitude. I mean, it was, whew. So she was, <clears throat> she had an attitude with the lady that was in front of me and she was just talking to her being real short, real rude. And so I'm preparing myself mentally to, to, to just handle this woman because sometimes um, I get into a mode where I'm going to give, give it to you the way you give it to me. That's how, what, that's, that was my mindset back then. So something said, which was the Holy Spirit said, mm -mm, just be, be cordial. So when she got done with the lady, she's still, you can tell she's upset because the way she's moving the cash register and she's scanning my stuff. And I just simply asked her, you know, I said, how, how are you doing? And it was like she dropped her guard because I think she, she was expecting me because I saw this whole ordeal. She was expecting me to treat her a certain type of way. But when I made the mental decision, because the Holy Spirit told me to, and I had to be obedient, when I made that decision to, to approach her differently, her entire demeanor and everything shifted in a moment. In, in a moment. And as I stood there and I asked her how she was doing, she just looked at me and tears started rolling down her face. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what, in the, what is going on? And so she, she begins to tell me that her baby, her six, I think the baby was six months old, six months old, her baby died like two days before or maybe the day before her, she lost her baby and she was at work because she needed the money to pay for the funeral. Now think about that. She was not, she was, she was dealing with a whole lot of stuff. So what if I ignored that 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 word from the Holy Spirit was like no because she she has an attitude, and I gave it to her the same way she gave it to me. You don't know what people are going through in a moment in their lives. So if they're treating you a certain type of way, the only thing to do is just love on them, just love on them, pray for them, keep it moving, because we don't know what people are going through. There's anger, there's depression, there's rage, there's fear, there's so. There's things that happen as a child that they may be dealing with that you may never know, that we may never know. And so they're reacting to you or interacting with you from hurt, from pain, from disappointment, from fear, from all kinds of things. So it doesn't do us any good to match their crazy with our crazy. All right. So, yeah, very important, very important. Um, Marquette, I really need to ask you a question in private, please. Okay, so if you need to ask me a question in private, uh, go to marquettabreson.com slash ministry or, or you can text. All right, now I will say this. If you want it private and you don't want anybody else to see it, don't text it because sometimes my team um, sees some of the text messages that, that are sent. 
If you want it private to where nobody sees it but me, go to marquettabreson.com slash ministry and fill out that form. That only comes to me. Nobody else sees that. All right. So that's the story that I wanted to share. Um, I wanted to end this live on that. I see a bunch of people joined at the end. Be sure to go back and watch this live. I share with you more than three things to avoid when ventilating, but also gave some things that you want to make sure you do when ventilating. Um, you are so welcome. You're welcome. It's every day with customer service while working in an airline these days. Ooh, tell me about it. Ooh, I, that's a whole nother live. I've seen some crazy things in the airport with all the traveling I've done. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, that is a word right there. Sometimes we are the only, think about, think about that though. Sometimes we are the only Jesus that people see. That's deep. That's heavy. So we have to be very mindful of how we carry ourselves in certain situations. All right. I could go on. See, I could go all, on and on and on. Look at there. The numbers just jumped up again. Mm -mm -mm. Go back and watch this live from the beginning. I love each and every one of you. I'll be back here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Remember, there's almost less than 24 hours left to enroll in Lacewig University. Just go to lacewiguniversity.com to enroll. I don't know when I'm going to do it again. This is everything that you get right here on the screen. Don't miss out. This is an amazing opportunity. Um, I love you and I'll talk to you soon.